to have passion in life is everything. What's your Everest? Oh, is it yeah. that 200-inch box? They just look so impressive when they're wide. Especially running away. <laughs> Welcome to this week's episode of Eastman's Elevated. It's like a think tank for outdoor activity. It sounds exactly like my hunting. Just always thinking about it, always trying to evolve it and make it better. Here's your host, Brian Barney. Hey, what's happening, guys? Eastman's Elevated here. So I got a new episode for you. It's that fun time of year where we're all out in the field and hunting hard. And um, boy, I I got finished up with that Idaho mule deer hunt and and uh, came back and had a couple buddies come out. My buddy uh, Janus and my buddy Robin, uh, two friends from Hawaii. And Robin's been on the podcast before. And gosh, we got after it. Uh, been hunting elk here for seven eight days and and uh, mixed in a little whitetail hunting when we had this gnarly storm come in and we talk about that but um just just really great guys and and really fun hunting and did some day hunting from the house and we did a backpack trip way up top up into the high country and um we've been just chasing elk and 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 being into them so um man we just sat down one late night here kind of their their second to last night here and recorded a podcast tell you guys what we've been up to and what we've been doing and and kind of our our tactics after these elk these public land wilderness bulls and what an exciting week of elk hunting I mean, we just had so much fun and so many encounters um it's just awesome when you when you get into them you know you got to work so hard sometimes you cover so many miles and you're just searching for them but when you can find them and really get into them, you know, that's the excitement of bow hunting. So anyways, we recorded a podcast. Great couple guys. I, I really had a fun week hunting with them and and uh, now just back getting a few things done here and, and uh, going to get ready for the next trip. So just a fun time of year. Uh, today's sponsor is Yeti Coolers. Um, Yeti is just a game changer for me. So I used them a bunch in Idaho there when I shot that mule deer buck and we were having really hot weather and it was like 95 degrees or above. And I got that buck back and got him on ice. It's just amazing how long that Yeti will keep ice. And, you know, I always mention that it's a bear proof container when you're in national forest and wilderness, you put a couple locks on either side. Uh, you don't get in any trouble from the Forest Service for, for not hanging up your food or not having it properly stored. So I, I think that's a huge bonus. And, and just how long it'll keep ice and cooled that buck down. And I, I always keep, you know, the meat out of the ice. I keep everything drained. The Yetis have great drains on them. Um, yeah, and that buck, you know, we were able to to buy a couple days while Dan hunted there and then, um, you know, able to get it back and butchered up and, and everything just turned out perfect. But those, without those Yeti coolers, I couldn't do it. And I just, um, they're, they're really building a great product all the way from their, their cups to their, uh, you know, to their coolers, to their soft bags. Um, they just got so many great products out there and it's, it's one of those deals I bought, so many coolers over the years that that have busted lids or you you bust the the cap that drains them or they the drain sits too high so you can't get the water out and you buy so many of those that if I just would have bought the right cooler the first time I would have been way better off and and so I will next time super happy with my yeti and and want to get some different sizes so thanks to them for sponsoring the podcast um over there at Eastman's we're all just hunting hard um Gosh, I, I just heard back from, from Brandon Mason. He just got back from a huge Alaska trip. Sounds like he had a good trip up there. I just got done with some elk hunting, getting ready to leave again on another elk hunt. Going to do a, a bunch of days and go after my bull and, and uh, try to capture it on film. I've got the, the same camera guy that, that did it for me last year, and, and he's just like a buddy I can team up with and go hunt. So I'm just super stoked to do that, and I, I know all the guys in in the office there have hunts coming up and I'm checking in here and there and, and, and looks like they're getting some quality animals and some quality time of field. Um, I did see a, a great promo for Eastman's for the magazines. Um, right now you can get an outdoor edge kit. It's worth like thirty nine ninety nine, and you can get that with a subscription to both magazines, both the Eastman's bow hunting journal and the Eastman's hunting journal. And, and uh, let's see, I think the bow hunting journal just came out. I had an advanced stocking uh, article in there I was really proud of and then um, I just I just wrote one for the Eastman's hunting journal that's going to come out um, I think it just went to went to print which means in the next month so um, but I wrote an article for that that I'm really proud of um, it's all about uh, uh, hunting bulls and um, hunting hunting bulls in the early season like that that early rifle or real late bow 
um, really fun article to write. It's kind of the, the toughest time of year to hunt elk before you get that weather and after the rut. Um, so really cool article there, but, uh, with that, let's get this thing rolling. This is a really fun podcast. Uh, two of my good buddies, I consider my friends, just a great adventure with these guys. These guys are just as game as it comes. Super hunters, uh, great stalkers, uh, real intelligent and, and a great approach to hunting. And like I said, we just had a blast running around the mountains and, and hope to have more adventures with these guys. So, uh, enjoy the podcast guys. Okay. I'm live here with Robin and and uh, I'm here with Janus, a couple of my buddies that are here from Hawaii, and we're hunting elk, and we're recording a podcast here. We got one more day left of, of elk hunting, and we've just been in them. Boy, it's been fun, huh? Oh, um, you you took us after them, that's for sure. Yeah. Well, we had to work for them. Um, tough to find in the beginning, right? Yeah. You uh, you're an animal. There's no doubt about that. You you go after it, and you make us go after it, and yeah. test our bodies, and test our minds, and everything else. I am. Yeah, you guys are. Oh, man, did we push hard. Um, we did a bunch of miles. So we started off, um, you showed up in this country, and you're sea level, and we're at elevation here pushing 8,500, 9,000. You drank a bunch of water to start with, trained before you got here. And, and we started hunting, and uh, Robin showed up early, and Janus showed up, you know, yeah. when the party started. You just yeah, showed I, up when the elk were going. I was there, like, maybe three or four days later, you know, and it was storming and <clears throat> flew in, and we kind of didn't really know what to do. And Brian's like, let's go hunt some whitetails, man. And it's, like, raining and cold. I was like, all right, it sounds good. We can't really see anything in the mountains right now, and that was a blast, man. Oh, yeah. So uh, we took a break in the middle. Like, it got super stormy, and it, it fogged in everywhere, and we couldn't see anything. And we didn't know where the elk were. We had chased them a little bit, but we just didn't know where the party was. And I just kept telling them, you know, we just got to keep traveling country, keep looking. We'll find them. And we looked over drainages that didn't have elk, and all of a sudden we got this massive storm in. And so, yeah, we um, we took a break and hunted whitetails on the valley floor, and you could actually see something. Oh, spot and stock whitetail. Who would have guessed? <laughs> right? Yeah, it was fun, man. No tree I mean, stand, nothing. Yep, no tree stand, just moving in the field and trying to get on them. Um, that's a fun way to hunt them. And, oh. and we got lucky. I knew a good guy that let us on and let us hunt them in a good spot where there was a bunch of whitetails in there. And so we went in and spot and stock whitetails, and then you got a doe tag and I got a doe tag, and we just started hunting them and took a little bit to figure out where they wanted to hang out. Yeah, man, I've never hunted whitetails before, but they are, they're fast, you know, they got some, they got some good muscles, you know, and they're, they seem to be a lot more jumpy than the axis deer that we're used to hunting, you know, those things can dodge your arrow, you know, Brian, Brian took a shot at one, and I seen, I've never seen something dodge an arrow that fast, man, it was unbelievable, it was 40 yards, I mean, I thought it was a dead doe. <laughs> it, it, it matrixed my arrow, it? Didn't matrixed it? your arrow. It was 44 <laughs> yards, perfectly stable, and, and set, and tried to shoot her. And by the time my arrow got there, she had ducked and spun and was out of the way of my arrow. Dude, it was like you completely missed her. But, I mean, I watched that arrow, and it would have it would have nailed her. I mean, one did that one to, to me a couple, like, a day later, you know, and I took off the tip of its tail. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I thought I nailed that thing. <laughs> That was crazy. Yeah, souvenir, white tail. Souvenir. Yeah, I got my white tail. <laughs> <laughs> that was a blast, man. That was so funny. But, yeah, they'll jump your string. Jumpier than any other animal. Like, antelope will jump your string. Mule deer will. I mean, elk usually wait for it unless they're just looking to leave right as you shoot. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, those white tails, they were jumpy. Yeah, a couple ducked our strings there. But then we got the better of them. Uh See, you scored first, um, Robin, with a nice buck, huh? I did, yeah. I, after missing, God, four times on him. Yeah, you were hungry for him. You <laughs> I, were crawling I, through everywhere. I, I was belly crawling, wet, soaking wet, soaked to the bone. And, uh, God, I'm not used to shooting with so much clothes on. I mean, puffball jacket, rain jacket, and I, I shot four times and finally realized that I was hitting my jacket every time. And you... You know, you gave me a nice brace to put over my jacket, tie it down, and yeah, you had to try on three of them. I think you yeah. ended up using Katie's. I, I used your daughter, your ten-year-old daughter, <laughs> and, and it, it was able to strap down my jacket. And sure enough, buck the next morning, and I just plugged him. Yeah, and, and uh, well, and your rangefinder was all fogged oh, up. It, everything. We Bell were hunting right in the middle of the storm. It, it was just, raining just nonstop, sleeting and but, raining and gnarly. Yeah, wind blowing, cold, but there was a bunch of deer out there that were just moving through and yeah. 
feeding on that alfalfa. But yeah, you made a good play, made a good shot on that buck. Um, yeah. And was second, we hunted it in the evening and then you got him the next morning. Got him the next morning. I, I thought I smoked him and, and shot felt good. And he ran like 10 yards and stopped and just stood there looking at me. And so I knocked another arrow and shot him again. And I spined him the second time. And after seeing the first placement, he would have died right there. But I, I'm, I'm all for putting another arrow in an animal if I can. And yeah. I'm glad I did. For sure. Yeah. They're tough. Yeah, white white tails are tough. White tails are tough. Axis yeah. deer, I mean, they're all they're all pretty tough animals. They're you all know? tough. They're used to you. They're used to fighting, and especially the bucks. You know, you know the horns they got to carry around. You know, they're they're strong. Yeah, the white tails prance funny when they run. They've all got characteristics that they are all look injured. To- they all look injured <laughs> when they run. Brian's like, I think I hit it. <laughs> and the thing's prancing around. Robin's like, yeah, I think I hit it. He looks like he's limping. And no, then the whole herd ran right away. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty cool. They got sharp instincts, though. They're looking for you out there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, you said you could get away with a little bit more in tight, like drawing your bow and different things where they'd stand and look at you. For sure. And I think that's a tendency they have. But, um, man, they pick you out good. Anytime you're trying to move through that stuff. Um, you, you really got to be concealed with your movement. And then the key is just being in the zone they want to be in. This is fairly open country. And so we kind of figured out which zones we like and kind of all split up. And yep. then we'd work those zones, and those zones had deer. Yeah, it didn't take us long to get it down, you know. But I noticed the difference between the white tail and the axis deer on Maui. You know, I think they're a little sharper. They got a little sharper eyes, and they're a little more witty. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it's, it's a little bit easier to sneak up on the axis deer and – um yeah, I don't know. I, I just I just think the axis are a little bit easier to hunt, at least spot and stock I, wise. I, I, I don't know. I, I I have to disagree with you. I I think uh, axis deer are damn tough. We're just used to hunting them. Maybe yeah. And, maybe and, that's and the you, case. And you know their habits. You know when they're looking at you and and. Well, how- you know the area too. You know what I mean. It's a different, it's a whole different ball yeah, game. What yeah. you can get away with and what you can't. But right. but yeah, I thought that the whole time that. That uh, Robin, that you thought axis steer were tougher, and that you thought axis steer were easier, and maybe it was just the scenarios that me and you had. Me and Janus hunted together the first day, and we'd get busted. You just barely even think about coming over a rise, or just barely even there, and they start staring at you, and it takes forever for them to forget about you, and they're they're easy to jump once you spook them, and they're they're just tough spot and stock. I thought. They are. I mean, Robin yeah. seemed to have. Maybe you, you Robin got too. Robin had the I, luck. I, oh, I, I, I love so many arrows at those yeah. things. Yeah. They, yeah. yeah. They just kept dodging mine, so maybe that's why I yeah. think they're harder. Yeah. <laughs> but fun couple days you know, anyways. You know what? It's because you were wearing Kuyu. Yeah. Easy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But, but hey, didn't, didn't the weather clear up? Yeah, it did. Yeah. So the weather cleared. We got a mega storm. and. And uh, so we backpack hunted like three days prior to you getting here, four yeah. days prior. Um, Robin came out, and, and you stayed back. Um, you stayed back with Sean. Sean yep. wasn't feeling right, and so you made sure his, everything was taken care of there. Yep. Uh, Robin flew out. We started backpack hunting, and gosh, we made it up into the hills. And so the first hunt we had, we got on a bull and got close, and he was in this spot where we just – it was the first place I'd, I'd – we drove out and glassed it from afar and looked up there and went, yep, there's elk, and looked up there, and there was a nice six-point bull up there. And so, and it looked like a 15-minute walk, nice little stroll right up to this bull. Yeah. 2,000 feet in elevation later. <laughs> that mountain is so deceiving, w- isn't it? Wake you up. Yes. Yeah, we're going to go from 6,000 to 8,000 feet and go shoot a bull. Yeah. yeah right. Oh, oh, just straight suck, up sucking oxygen. <laughs> well, yeah, <laughs> trying to get acclimated. That's totally oh. it. Yeah, come from sea level and just come to the mountains and just come playing. So we hiked up there the first morning and we left early, you know, and we got up there and and got close to him. Like we got there right to the meadow that was kind of where he was at, but he fed into the timber into this little secluded pocket meadow in there. And so we rolled up and then spotted him right there. Yeah, it was, um, what, what were we, 80 yards right off the bat? I think I ranged a cow at 74 yards that he was rutting, and uh, it was on. We, yes. We, we were creeping through the woods after him. Yep. Did he ever, he never bugled, did he? He never, the, n- cows weren't talking, he wasn't bugling, nothing was going on. You you just caught the tip of his antlers as he was grazing, and we thought he was alone at first. And, and then we saw the cows come in, and he was rutting those cows, and 
man, if he, if he had just come back after that one cow, we probably would have had a sixty yard shot on him. But, but oh, were yeah. you guys just following him for like hour eighty yards half. the whole time, hour, hour and, and a half, half, just creeping, just, just creeping through the woods? And, Dude, that sounds awesome. And then we lost him for a period of time and and spotted him again, and um, creeping through these woods trying to find him and and. All of a sudden, we lost him again, and I, I thought I spotted one, and I, I kind of kneeled down, and sure enough, this cow is just staring at my movement, kneeling down, and we paused for a while, and they, and then the the bull came in and, and rutted her out, and they kind of ran off, and I needed water so bad, unzip my pack, and the minute I started unzipping my pack, that cow barked at us, and I, I don't know how she heard the zipper on the pack but she did they were probably 120 yards at that point mm -hmm. and um yeah well we don't even know if that was it i, I mean the it could have been the wind i, I it don't know been anything it, it's yep. just it, it's i mean there were gunshots in the valley below from bird hunters but man I, I i thought for sure i just needed a sip of water and lesson learned you know suck it up keep yeah. going well we had been chasing them forever and we'd get close and then they'd put some distance between us and then we'd catch back up and relocate them see them first watch them just go through the timber and you can only move so much and you're trying to chase a herd with a bull in it you know yeah. and so you're you're just trying to cat and mouse the herd and trying to get a play to get in front of them or get you know watch them start to bed right before they start to bed they'll feed around a bunch you know and so they kind of feed around and stop moving where you can kind of make plays. And then if you can see them bed down and actually see them there, that's a high percentage play. And so we're just trying to keep with them and trying to get a move on them. But, yeah, it was fun the first morning, but no bugles. We didn't hear any bugles. No bugles. Were, I mean, that was a beautiful six by six. Oh, yeah. It was I a mean, nice I'm, six point. I, you, you threw me into the woods uh, right off the plane, not acclimated to the altitude, hiked 2,000 feet, and, and we're in a bowl. I yeah. Mean, I, I mean, minutes. We were two minutes behind shooting that bowl. Oh, oh the whole we time. So were. Yep. But fun to move around him and play the game. And I, gosh, I like to play it that way where, you, you know, when he's got cows, I don't even call at him. I just want to move with him. And I just, and, and every time you creep up and have to relocate him over a ridge or through the timber, you got to keep your eyes peeled. And there's two of us and you've got really good eyes too. And so you never know who's going to spot what first. And, and you always like we switch positions and, and you're in the front position and I'm off your shoulder and we're just trying to catch a, a cow or a glimpse or a tan or a this, but you have to see them first. That's the game. And so constantly moving slow and using your binos and sometimes too slow. Sometimes you need to move fast to catch up to them. Yep. Isn't that true? Janice, you know true. about moving fast from tonight, yeah. right? Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> Brian, Brian is trying to kill me tonight. <laughs> I'm not used to running down the mountain. You know, 45 minutes up and 15 minutes down. It was just crazy. <laughs> and, hey, we got a shot. We were on them. Man. Yeah. That, was, that was intense. Yeah. Yeah, no. well, just breathing so hard from yeah. the run down and just Western hunting how it goes, and we just needed 30 more seconds or a minute on that bowl. And so he was in oh, the perfect man, spot. Close. I mean, sometimes the elk just win. And um, yeah. we – perfect spot. You said it was – you were watching from below, and you said it was when the bull ran into the cows. So we just saw a bunch of cows, but we've seen elk all week. And so oh, man, every day. we figured, day. like, there's a bull with them. And you thought you saw a bull there, but we were going oh, up I, no matter what. So – I'm, I'm tagged out, so I, I couldn't go up with you guys, and I sat in the truck, and I, I didn't want to be a third person blowing everybody out anyway, blowing the scent out. And uh, I'm glassing from the truck, and I see 10 cows bedded in the meadow, and you guys are stocking up. I'm like, there's got to be a bull in there. There's got to be a bull. And sure enough, all of a sudden, this bull just comes running out of the woods. Cows are bedded, and he just starts ramming these cows with his antlers get up get up get up pushes them all out of the meadow and then just starts grazing by himself and and these cows <laughs> just run sitting on my grass these cows just run up right where you guys need to get to shoot that bull and i'm just sitting there like oh my god this is the worst scenario possible this is this is horrible yeah and and i got to watch it all play out and it was awesome to watch but so frustrating at the same time oh we were so close he was he was just in the perfect pocket and we we saw him early like it's storming again and raining and we went to this vantage point and all of a sudden there's all these cows up there and so we race up the mountain and 
This country, it's just deceiving. It doesn't look that bad, but it is steep. It, it has gained yeah. so much so elevation deceiving. just to climb up to where that bowl is. We had 45 minutes of just hard going as quick as we could go up that hill. Oh, yeah. It looks like a nice little meadow, and then you get up there, and it's almost vertical. You know, and then you get to the top, and you got, like, three choices. You're like, do I go to the mound on the right side? Do I go right up this little gut? Or do I go up into the timber up here and try to get on top of them? You know, and we made, we made a call, and I think it was a pretty good call. It was just... You know, that one cow just kind of snuck up the meadow. Yeah. And then not to mention those grouse that spooked. Yeah, it spooked four grouse out of the saddle right above them. Yeah. Probably got the attention there. You know, Probably should have taken a five, ten-minute break. But yep. then that voice in your head says, go take a look now. Go yep. take a look now. You yep. know, and you just want to get there. But we were moving up slow. We chose the saddle to tar- – or pr- kind of the edge of the timber yep. right there. And we crept up, and we were going so slow, looking left, looking right, looking yep. down below us, just trying to relocate them over the ridge and had a cow come up on our left side at – 30, 40 yards. Yeah, it was, the cow was like 30 yards. The rest of them were like 115, you know what I mean? what is that cow doing there? <laughs> <laughs> Man, that's so it. So, yeah, and, and we, you know, it's frustrating. You know, hunting elk, you have blown scenarios where you'll put miles in for this opportunity to go get close and go play the game. And, and just like us earlier this week, like we had a play on a, on a nice six-point bowl that we had waited on and we went down in there and the wind got funky in there, and then you don't even get a chance at them. And, and so the wind has been one of the major challenges that we've had, trying to get the stocks right with these mountain winds and trying to know what it's doing and when to make your move. But, yeah, tonight we got busted by sight. We had a perfect wind. Yeah, wow. I mean, yep. it, you could beat yourself up over it, but, I mean, either way you look at it, it could have gone the wrong way. I think I think we made a good choice. You know, we just got busted. Yes. It happens. Oh, yeah, right. They're going to win sometimes. And so – then we watched him go down below us in the open, and, and we stayed motionless. There was only one cow that ever saw us, and she just kept barking, and the whole herd with a nice stand-up five in there, you know, they were, they were barking and running down the hill, and then, you know, we could hear some bugles up the hill, which is probably going to be us in the morning. There was some oh, bugles man. going off up the hill, but we didn't know if we had enough time to get to them, and so we sat on this knob contemplating what we were going to do, either go try to cut off this bull that we spooked down below us, the one cow, and they kind of ran down below us and cut across the hill or go chase bugles up higher, but they sounded a ways off. Oh, man, but they were going off. You know, they were they were mad at each other. There was three or four of them up there, and every time we tried to think about what to do, I'd be like, oh, maybe we should go after this one they were just on. He's right below us. There would be a, a huge bugle up above, and then another one. I'm like, shoot, maybe we should go after those. And um, we just we waited there for about five minutes, you know, which was probably about – 30 seconds too long and decided to go after these other ones and brian took off like a jackrabbit and i was trying to keep up with him man it was it was it was a track you know oh we pushed yeah we were trying to cut him off because we had a giant coolie and it was all open down below us but this giant coolie on our right side with the wind dry and these elk took this long route around but then they were going to cross that coolie down below us but yep. they kept working down and away from us so um we made our decision, and so uh, we took off on our best track sprint down the you know, steep slope down there to try to cut them off in that coulee. Dude, I was like, we were just here like five minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> we, were, we got all the way up there. We were there for five minutes and had to just race back down. It, I mean, it was literally like 40 minutes to get up and 15 down. I mean, I got to watch that oh. whole thing unfold. And, oh, uh, yeah. Uh, how epic to watch and how frustrating at the same time. It was awesome, man. I have never run down a mountain so fast. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. hard, it's hard chasing Brian up the mountain and down the mountain. Dude, you telling me. Yeah. I mean, we got down there, and I ran up to Brian. I'm just beat. I couldn't even breathe. Brian's sitting there just, you know, calm as anything <laughs> i'm just like yeah, yeah. i'm just like dude were you running <laughs> <laughs> whatever yeah we uh we both did good we pushed down there and gosh we were just seconds away from getting where that bull was going to cross that coulee and, yep. and sit down with a perfect win and let him just yep. cross it 30 yards and stick him you know but um we, yeah, just, it, we it, just missed it man. yeah just missed him yep for sure 
It was close, though. I mean, what do you do? That was our play for the night. So tomorrow morning, we got like one more day unless you move your flight. But um, we know where a few bulls are. They're just yep. way up the mountain. We just got to go chase them. Yeah, right, go next, gain a, right next to the gut pile. Right right next to my, <laughs> my carcass with the grizzly sitting on it. <laughs> yeah, that, we're going to have to good... give that one a wide bird. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's a little scary. You know, I'd, right. I'd you, rather you, face a shark. I gave you my handgun. You're good. Well, I la- the last time I shot a handgun was probably 10 years ago. <laughs> and I don't think I could hit a beer can like 10 feet in front of me. <laughs> I, I, I've never shot that handgun. I just bought it about two days ago. <laughs> we don't even know if it fires. That's right. Yeah, right. I trust it. All I know is there's elk up there because they were going off, you know, and there's nothing like hearing an elk, you know, three, oh. 400 yards away just going off, and then another one it screaming back at it. So it was exciting. constant tonight. And that was just – that was, we were up there the morning before, and you shot a, a giant. Yeah, they're they're up there. It's it's the party. You, Brian said, let's find the party, and we found the party. Yeah. yeah, we just keep looking for that massive elk that has a bunch of different bulls and a bunch of different cows and where they're hanging out and doing their deal. And I just – Kept telling the guys, like, that's what we got to find. We got to keep covering miles until we find the party and can go get into a bunch of them, you know, because that's when you kill one. Yeah. It, it, you know, you can kill one on a lone chance. In the first backpacking trip, we did a ton of miles and we went and checked one giant drainage that's always good for me. And there was wallows down in the bottom and we there wasn't an elk in there to be seen or heard. But I just know, you know, if elk are in country, you see them or you hear them. I'm pretty convinced. Okay, you showed me an elk the first day, and then you took me on I don't even know how many mile, six thousand vert, <laughs> down down slidey mountain that I skied down. Yeah, just, well, it doesn't have any people for a reason. Yeah, it takes there's, a lot. There's, of there's no people to get up there. there. There's no elk up there. We're just gonna test you, <laughs> make sure that you can do this stuff, and then we're gonna just go shoot an elk right up this mountain over here. <laughs> <laughs> I wish that was the case, but just got to find him. And so we went way up high, crossed on this gnarly traverse up oh, there man. on the top of the mountain. I, at about, I think that's like 10, 9, 90, it, it was 9, 98, I think. 98. <laughs> we started at 6. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So we crossed the gnarly traverse, and I told you, well, we can't do this back when it's wet. Or when we get snow. Or you're never going to get me to cross it back anyway. Yeah. Because it's too <laughs> sketchy. <laughs> it was only sketchy in the shoot. Other than that, yeah. it was fine. I, I mean, I, I, I've hunted tar in New Zealand. I hunt Hawaii in our sketchy lava terrain. And that was, that was hairy. I, I was nervous. And you got to have trekking poles in that terrain. No oh, doubt. Oh, it helps so much, you, doesn't it? You have it? to. Yeah. And, um, well, and the pack of... We're traveling with our camp at this point. Yeah, I so mean, we camped above the wall. Thirty seven pound night. pack, which is going in light, but man, I well, that's not including handguns and bear spray and everything else. Yep. So forty five pound pack. But um still it, it was it was hairy. Oh yeah. Yep. Tough to be light, isn't I, it? I, like I just we just kept pulling stuff out. I just kept telling you, we gotta go light, we gotta travel miles. I think I weighed in at 29 pounds with my handgun, and so I took the <laughs> I took the gas from you. So I was I was 31 pounds. I was so light, but gosh, it's what you need when you got to climb mountains and move your camp and find elk. And so we went over the top of that thing, and then we found a good six point bull down below us. And you know I don't call too much anymore. I love that just stalking, and um, you you just don't let them know you're there, and you try to cut them off, get in front of them, or move in on them, and so. We, we played it that way, but we found a bull that was bugling at 11, 12 in the morning oh, man. and just going nuts. He, it, we, we had a decision to make, and in hindsight, did we make the wrong decision? I don't know, but, I mean, that bull was just tearing up the hillside wanting to find cows, and he was solo. But then we saw a couple more, uh, her, another herd off to the distance and some bugling, um, and we decided not to go in after him just to not bump everything out of there. It's the way I like to to play it, I and know. it paid off in the end. It did, Like, absolutely. you keep making those plays, and eventually it comes together, you know. But but you guys had hunted elk before, too, and done a lot of calling after him yep. and been successful. Yep. Sean shot that great bull with you guys, and, we and had, we had you called him in and yep. had chances, but – and all tactics work, you know. Yep. It's just kind of what you prefer for the country you hunt. And in this country, I just like to play them mornings and evenings on their feeding feature. Unless they're bugling really hard, I'll follow them into the timber and try to get a play on them. But, you know, other than that, I let them go to their beds and kind of leave them alone. Unless I know, 
you know, that exact elk position or I coyote them to their beds, like follow them to their beds and watch them bed down. Other than that, I just wait and get a play in the evening. Well, I mean, we were, we were a hundred yards on that bowl that evening. Mm-hmm. And the wind just screwed us up. Yeah. Oh, we couldn't get a good wind. I, I, I mean, I know better, but you're just trying to hunt them on the lee wind side. Well, it, thermals are going to kick in. I mean, there, there was, we knew the thermals we were going to kick in, and we just didn't realize thermals were going to kick in after dark. Yeah. And sure enough, we're walking out, and it's blowing hard right in our face, and it, it just, it just didn't work out. It wasn't it? Just wasn't meant Isn't to be. Isn't that the truth? Wasn't yeah. the right bowl. Well, and we could not. We got over that hillside. And I wanted to get far enough over the ridge to get a read on what the wind was doing. So you keep thinking it's going to change the farther you get down or the farther you get in that canyon. But it just kept going every which way we had no, but the way yeah. we needed. And the way we needed was the dominant wind direction in a downhill thermal in the last hour of light. Like, yeah. that's not too much to ask no, for. No, no. <laughs> that was like what it should have done. I, I you mean, know? We, we sat on that hillside for two hours and, like, that's where we need to be. There's no doubt that is where we need to be. And we got there and we, we had blown him out getting down there. Yeah. Nice six point. He had these cranking big fronts and, and cranking third. You know, it – he didn't have the biggest fifth in the world, but wide nice and wide just bowl. good bull. Yeah. And so yeah, after spooking him, we found him in the avalanche shoot the next day. Yeah. He bugled a couple times, disappeared in the timber, and then we tried to play the wait for him game and thought he'd feed out in that avalanche shoot throughout the day, and he never did. Then that storm rolled in. And, oh, oh, man. <laughs> we got the mega storm. The mountain storm, hail, and we, we started a fire, and oh, man, it – you looked at me at one point, should we get in our tents? Like, yeah, yeah. And then all of a sudden the fire went out because it was flooding around us. Oh, it poured. He's like, does it ever rain hard here? And I'm all, no. It, uh, you know, we get these storms that roll through. It's, it's not, not a big deal. not a Hawaii rain. It, it's you, not a Hawaii rain. And it, it gave us a Hawaii rain for four hours. And the lightning just went off above us. And thank goodness we camp in good spots. I mean, we just traversed a big open ridge. And, you know, the only flat spot is on the ridge. I mean, uh, we dug out our beds and just like little elk beds that were just, they took like 20 minutes of work to even get them tolerable. And so we got dirt built up and we're on a side hill and it starts to come down it was yeah it was heavy i at one point the water was rushing because we dug out these beds the water was rushing underneath my tent between the floor of my tent and the the tent itself and i got a little worried i'm not gonna lie like if, <laughs> if my sleeping bag gets soaked and we're up here it's yeah, hailing we're it's way cold. back in there we're two days back in we're, we're two days back in and and this this could get hairy at, at some point and luckily it let up and everything was relatively dry well and, manage your gear right you just yeah. got to get in there and you soaked up the water with your socks and then you you fixed where the water was coming in and the water wasn't coming in like it was a river. It, it was, was. I got lucky and it poured by my tent and, and then went, went hit down my tent. Yeah, you, I think I think you you created a little <laughs> channel around yours into my tent because I was right below you and oh man, it it was coming down. Yeah, safe spot to camp. We finally picked. Not too many deadfalls uh, over us. And then we and you know we're talking about grizzlies. Don't don't put your camp on a hard trail don't you know don't don't put it on a ridge line they're going to follow or a hard trail to a main main area they want to go and you know we we set up camp kind of late in the day next day i'm looking around sure enough i find grizzly claw marks in a tree <laughs> with hair oh it's probably an elk or something five, scraping five, on that five, thing. five, five <laughs> what you want to think <laughs> five yards from our tents and then uh the water source, the only water source on the whole mountain, is what this hard trail is going to. So mm-hmm. yeah, well, you want to be by the water. <laughs> I did want to be by the water. <laughs> oh man, yeah. yeah. Well, it was just a tough spot to set up, and we wanted to be as high on the mountain as we could be. And I had a couple good camp spots that I used, but they were over towards the elk. So we didn't want them to get our wind, and so we started looking for a campsite like in an undesirable spot on this side hill and just trying to find a spot. Knew we had to be off the ridge for lightning. We found a couple spots that were really flat and looked really good. The one had this giant 5,000-pound tree that was leaning <laughs> over the beds, and I was like, no, I don't, can't sleep here on no, this flat the, bench. The deadfall was too scary as yeah, well. Yeah, so we yeah. finally found a safe spot, which was a safe spot. It was. We rode out the storm, and uh, man, I mean – you guys hear me talk about lightning. Oh. That, that was that was intense. Like yeah. I, I tried to record it. I'm lying in my tent for four hours with 
hail and rain and rivers underneath me. Yeah, and, I got that video before I came out here. Yeah. And, it, I mean, that was before I came out. I was like, oh, I'm glad I stayed behind. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I wouldn't give up that experience for anything. That yeah, was, and, you know, you just got to – I mean – you're stuck with a scenario and you got to make the best of it. And like you said, you told me on the phone, you're like, you know, <clears throat> it was raining and pouring. There's a river coming through and I was a little worried, you know, but you, you kept your cool and you pulled your, pulled your pad up and you made it through and you didn't get your sleeping bag wet and everything was all good in the morning. And yeah, my tent leaked. Gosh, I've got, I've got good gear. Um, I got this new Hilbert tent this year that I was so psyched on and, and then um, a buddy needed it for a sheep hunt, or a guy's buddy needed it for a sheep hunt, and so I had to send it out to him. And so I'm back to my last year's tent, which isn't a bad one or anything, but a couple years' use on it. And, I mean, as hard as it was raining, it was sprinkling in my tent. And, I mean, I had that last year in the breaks, too, in my other single-wall single, single wall tent, but I just need to set them up and waterproof them again, I think. But, yeah, it was raining so hard. But, yeah, that's where you're, you're trying to manage your stuff, keep your sleeping bag dry, keep your gear dry, dry bag bags are important then and you know make sure the flow is around your tent and just manage all scenarios but the lightning some some of those things i mean it doesn't bother me when i hear lightning and there's a storm no. going on but when it's in your drainage and right above you where you hear that that you see it the light and it and then it pops right afterwards like oh my gosh it shakes your tent it, so loud it was hitting within 200 yards of our tent yeah or well, right above us right above us i mean it, it was I, like I said, I, I tried to film it. The, I've got minutes of film, and every time I'd shut off the camera, we'd it, get a boomer. We'd get a boomer, and and it was it was intense. Doesn't it, it make that intense. make your heart just jump into your throat for a little bit and start beating? And like, God, oh, that was close. Like <laughs> what those ones do to me, anyways. You know, and I've been in some bad lightning storms, and I just learned my lessons o over the years. I just I make sure I camp in a good spot for that yeah. stuff. And we knew the storm was coming in, and it, it rained, but it did let up. We got out that evening. Um, did we no. see anything? Oh, uh, yeah, we hunted that evening. Um, that, was the, that was the evening after. Oh, the bull we, never we, came we, out. We sat on that bull all morning, and then we went back to eat lunch, and that storm hit. Thank God we would have been stuck away from our camp yeah. in that storm. Which usually isn't a big deal, but that was a that, bad one. That was a bad one. And, we, yeah, we went back hoping that bull would be there, and he was long gone. It mm -hmm. was crickets that night. Mm -hmm. So then uh, we packed out, packed out to a different spot, called in a shuttle ride for my dad. He drove us back to our truck. But, yeah, coming out, oh, I took the shale. I, it's been a long time since I've been down there, and I – um. I don't run a GPS. Robin may make fun of me for it, but I've got a GPS in my head where I kind of remember every spot I've been. But, but you kind of push out things, too. You only got so much hard drive up there. And, and yeah, I, I think there's water over here. Oh, maybe that's not quite the spot. Or I, I think the trail goes this way. Oh, we, we get cliffed out. But yeah, your GPS is pretty good most of the time. Yeah. Yeah, well, I find I find the main drainages anyways, or the main <laughs> spots. I did walk us right to that old camp, which is just tucked in the middle of nowhere. You did. And I swear there was a spring below there, and we looked for it. And then I asked my dad later, and he's all, "No, you got to go off into that canyon in the left." I totally thought there was a spring in there, but we found water. What did we dig uh, out? Oh, we, we dug out a. a elk wallow who knows the how gnarly that was oh it wasn't exactly an elk wallow. there was elk wallows above it i don't and know it, i think it went into the mountain <laughs> i don't know <laughs> good thing you had your but, filter but yeah well it clogged the filter that's how gnarly it, it was it, it was yeah. a brand new filter it, it seemed like a spring coming out in that draw and we dug out a hole and it was pretty dirty i mean we could have waited for it to that, clear that was five six days ago we're not sick we're good yeah yeah, cleaned it. It's fine. Yeah, we're good. Yeah, Made it. Water is a filter. Water filter worked. Yeah, I've I've drank some water that I've had to get out of this high mountain pond this one time, and um, it tasted like elk piss smells. <laughs> it was, <laughs> like it just tasted. I couldn't take the taste away from it or anything. And you but, drink it without filtering it. No tablets. Oh yeah, I always filter it or treat it. Right. Yeah, I I can't remember what I treated it with at that point. You know, whether it was a pump, it was probably a light. Which kills all the bacteria as long as the water is clean. But you and still taste the grit. Oh, you still <laughs> taste the elk. Yeah, they've been rolling in there. Um, but yeah, uh, water's just the lifeblood of the backcountry. You just need it everywhere you go, everything you do. Yep. It's important that, to know where it is. That first camp, I mean, we got back there and it just felt so elky. I mean, the wallows, every, it's been so hot and you got just awesome wallows right below camp and just no elk sign. Nope. And usually this week is hot in there, but 
you know, every year it's different conditions, whether it's drier, whether it's wetter, where the feed is. And so it's just, takes a while to get dialed in and I've always done good in this drainage this week. I mean, I've had where there's a dozen bulls in that drainage, the party's there. The party's what we're looking for. Yeah. We want to find the party of elk. And so we rolled out of that drainage, side hilled over, hunted that different drainage, found that six, another five, made a couple plays, hiked out and then uh met Janus at the house, started whitetail hunting and then, you know, yeah. as soon as it cleared and we could get back to elk hunting. But it's storm for Two two days, two days solid. Two days where solid. you couldn't see anything on the. I think, it was, I think it was three days actually that we couldn't even hunt because, you know, I was, yeah, I think it was three days, and then the the minute it cleared up, you know, that evening we went out, and we spotted. Boom! Those we elk. were on elk. Yeah, we spotted those elk. Same spot yeah. that we were on them the first day. Which is yep. why it, glassing is so important. Like you were saying earlier, I think someone gave you a call. I mean, which is really cool. You got a call from some random somebody who's. You didn't even know, you know, called you up, was looking for some tips, you know, and uh, you were telling how important glassing is, you know. Yeah. Getting out there and just finding the elk, and, and you guys did a lot of that work before I even came out, which was cool, and you're like, let's go glass this other spot, and sure enough, they were right there in the same spot. Yeah, so we we finally found the elk, they were in the same spot, and and so we just went straight up the mountain and tried to get on them up and through there. There's a parking lot up there, and there was nobody in the parking lot. But we did see a guy glassing up yeah. in there, and it's just like, ah, we see elk. They're in that spot they were a few days ago. Like, we just got to go get up there and make a push. Like, we yep. got two, three hours to get up there, yep. and it's 2,000 feet of climbing. I'm not sure everybody wants to go climb up there, but we saw elk. It's been three days. We're hungry for it. We drove up and started hiking up there, and, and the guy actually drove up behind us and followed, but it's just public land. We're yep. all welcome there. Everybody yep. handles everything different, and, you know, what do you do? You just go up and try to make your best play at them. Got to be the first guy in. Yep. <laughs> Got to be the first your, guy in. And best play. For the majority of the time, we've been able to be by ourselves, but it's it's also tough when elk show up in a spot where you can see them. You know, it's, yep. it's like got to make your play. So we got up first and started pushing up the hill hard, and um, that was your first time up that, that hill. That was the first morning of elk hunting evening. for me anyway. That was an evening. First evening, yeah. Yeah, and yep. then, yeah we got like halfway up, and then – Robin right. spotted some elk on the left, which is actually the same spot we were tonight. I think it was the same. I think elk it was the you, same, elk. same elk you were on. Yeah, yeah. So I was you, on. You said I'm going to go for these ones, and yep. you and Janus go up to the top and go hunt. You know, and so yeah, you went after that bull. We got up there, and instantly we're an elk, and I can tell oh, we're yeah. in the party. There's bugling, cow calling. All oh, of a sudden, yeah. this bull's running up from the lower pond down in and through there and he's running up chasing some cows and they come by us at what 150 or 200 yards something like that maybe a little farther yeah maybe a little farther but it was it was close yep and so they came up and that was your first elk you got to see just this nice looking six point and so we have to hold still for like 10 15 minutes and i'm thinking the whole time like god is this guy gonna catch us you know behind us but you can only once you get up there you just got to play your gig and hunt the elk and you can't worry about what anybody else is doing and for the most part we were all alone by ourselves the whole week and a half we've been elk hunting or week we've been elk hunting it was just this time we had a guy that was rolling Uh, up to go get into him too so you split off we went up and then we started uh those elk ran by us we got up on top, and then you spotted a bull bedded that was at, like, 80 yards above us. Yeah, he was at 80 yards. I mean, we knew that guy was behind us, so we were kind of pushing up the mountain, you know, trying to trying to stay ahead of him, get on that herd of elk, you know. And then all of a sudden, I just look up, and there's – I mean, it was a decent-looking 6x6. Six six yeah. It was just staring at us. I'm like, he's, like, 80 yards, you know. Brian's ranging. It's 80 yards. And there's a bunch of bushes in the way. And I couldn't get a shot. It takes a couple steps towards us. I'm like, holy shit crap he's gonna walk right towards us and then he just kind of runs off to the left and brian, yep. brian tried to make a call but he didn't stop he took off he was just satellite i think yeah mouth called at him there's yeah. cow call there yeah. was but elk you, just going off that night. everywhere yeah. i mean i i was in a completely different area from you guys and there were five bulls just screaming and you guys had like five or six bulls screaming at least we were in the party and I, I thought you guys were using a hoochie mama or something with the amount of cow calls I oh. heard. And it was just the cows going after, nuts. After the yep. storm, you know, it, it pushed these elk to this spot. And we looked at the right spot and found the major migration of them. And they're just in there hot. And that's what you want to find is the party. And so we went in and started playing, all of us. Just getting on bulls, getting the wind right, not stalking recklessly. We got on a super nice six-point, right? Like this beautiful 
you know, just hammer of a bull. Oh, man. And, and so – we were watching him, and he had – I mean, you thought he had 50 cows. I thought he had 35 or 40, but he had a bunch of cows He was way. a stud. Yeah, and so we just – we got into 100 yards of him, and we had other smaller bulls. Like there was a like a two-by-three that was at 50 yards from us, and then cows all in between. And this bull just chased his cows in front of us and bugled and tried to breed them. And just the prettiest place on planet Earth. And we just sat there for an hour and a half, had no play to make, no other way to get on them, and just sat there with a good wind and just watched them rot. Yeah, this is right after the storm, you know, so the skies were blue. You can see all the fresh snow on the mountains. We were looking into the valley, and there's just this giant bull right in front of us at like 100 yards, just bugling, chasing his cows around. There was a pretty little lake right below it. I mean, it was just picturesque oh know. so awesome that was the first morning i went out evening <laughs> evening <laughs> <laughs> it's all blending together it does um so yeah we were just waiting for our play and we were waiting for him to feed over the ridge and we had slid 10 yards closer on our butts when we could but then we were just froze there forever uh you were sitting in some snow you enjoyed that uh, yeah that was kind of cold you always said you wanted to hunt in the snow coming from hawaii I mean, I was there. We sat there for about 45 minutes. Finally, I'm like, Brian, you got to give, give me my jacket out of my pack, man. I'm freezing. I start shaking. I'm like, I don't even know if I can make this shot. If it comes up this way, I'm not going to be able to shoot. So Brian uh, unzipped my pack and got me my jacket. I put that on. and I have to tell him, freeze. They're looking, you yeah. know, or, okay, you can move. And he it just really slowly just get his jacket on so he didn't freeze to death. We were just hypothermia up there. pretty much sitting there in the open, you know, in the grass. Yep. That was cool. Oh, it's way cool. And so they finally fed over the ridge, and we thought we had them and rolled down with the exact same wind we'd had for an hour and a half, rolled down and crept over where the last one was, and they were gone. They were way down the mountain. Now, I don't know if that guy below us made a play at him and, and spooked him or if our wind shifted, but anyways, we we busted the bowl, you know. Yeah, and, well, Robin's seen the guy below. I mean, it's hard to Where, where he was and where those elk came out, I'm pretty sure he made a play on him and, mm-hmm. and blew him out. Yep, and then they ran – all the way across the mountainside, but over, you know, by your feature I, I, that you were hunting. And I, you, you had a play on a bull earlier that night. I was 100 yards on that bull for, I don't know, 45 minutes, an hour. And I knew the wind was going to blow me out. And I just was pinned on this hillside, laying in snow, freezing. Dropped my pack like 40 yards below me. <laughs> Just shivering, and and as soon as the cows got to where I thought they would blow out, sure enough, they blew out. But that that bull had already uh, actually gone up after some bugles up in the hillside. He was chasing another bull up there. So I don't know if I would have had a play on him regardless. But um, then, yeah, your bull came screaming across the hillside maybe 200 yards below me, and I sprinted down, and I got within probably 90 yards of him trying to cut him off. And just couldn't get a shot they were moving too fast mm-hmm. and it turns out to be looks like turns out to be the oh, bull i shot the is. next morning yeah so i got some awesome pictures of it i've been thinking in the back of my head that maybe that was your bull that i got the pictures of you know he was just this giant heavy bull that we watched and appreciated all night long and chase but i was thinking that might be your bull so me and janus we finished up we spooked that bull towards you you made a play on him and then we made a play around the mountain. Like we didn't have a whole bunch of light left, but you know, we both decided like, let's go over the mountain, go see what's over there. So we rolled over and instantly started seeing more bulls and hearing bugles and it was going off over there. That's when they really turned on, man. I was just like, holy crap, right? These things are just going nuts over here. You know, we saw like a, a five point up on the hillside with a cow and a calf and then looked down below them and then saw, like a nice six point with a herd of cows down there and then could just hear bugles up and beyond us. And so, you know, we decided like, let's make this climb like up to this deal. Or we saw them moving through an open feature. Yeah. And remember I told you, like I've watched yeah. elk there enough and I've even killed my buddy Chase killed a really nice six point in that meadow. And so like I, I said, you know, Hey, I think they're going to come out on this. Meadow. Oh, let's you m- told me exactly what they were going to do. And they <laughs> did it. I couldn't believe it. Yeah. They sometimes couldn't. you get it right. And it's amazing how fast they cross that timber. Yeah. Really quick. And then they started piling out and I think another bull joined them, came down yeah. from the top or something. And, and then all of a sudden we heard a bull just over the ridge from us and we set up by a tree 
and and he bugles again, and he's close, you know, and we can tell he's close and hear cow calls, and there's just elk <laughs> moving everywhere. And we're yeah. starting to get into that late light. Yeah, it was getting dark, and we're just like, shoot, we better just – we better try and creep in on him because we're we're running out of light fast. And we made it like 15 yards. Oh well, yeah, if and, that. <laughs> and then I I grabbed your pack. There was a cow right there coming over the ridge, and we froze. And I I pulled your pack down. Remember? Yeah. And like so, I pulled down. So we were both kneeling. And then I was your range find guy, backup shooter. You were yep. leading in the front with your bow. And, and all these cows started to come over and filter at like 25, 30 yards right there. Yeah, there was a couple close. I swear there was a couple at like 10 yards. I couldn't believe it. I was freaking out. I was like, holy crap. And we were in the open, but they just didn't spot us moving. It was and, dark. You know, it, yeah, it, was, it, was, getting it, was, late. it was at that dusk hour. You know, I mean, it's hard to see. Harder for animals to see and harder for me to see, obviously. <laughs> yeah. And so then that bull walked up and then, so yeah, I mean, it was just, uh, we let all the cows filter by and then the bull came by right there, there, and we were close on him. 30 yards. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I took a 30 yard shot. You know, I hit him a little high. I, it was, it was a little dark, you know, and I kind of rushed it because as soon as I drew back, I mean, all the, the cows were right there at like 15, 20 yards and they, they jumped a little as soon as I drew back in the, in the. The bull did a little, you know how they do a little jerk, and then they looked at us. You know, I thought he was going to bolt. I probably should have taken a little time, more time with the shot, but um, I took a shot, and I hit him a little high. I, mean, I, thought, I, I thought you had him. I, I thought you had top of lungs. And... I put a rage through him, and, and that thing had some good penetration, you know, but it was dark, and um, we were up there, so we, we backed out of there and Tried to find it the next morning, but it was it was that kind of spotty blood trail where you it was, just see it drops. It was a weird blood trail. I, yeah. I've never – I've tracked a lot of animals, and that thing was zigzagging up and – it was like he was rutting cows with an arrow in him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He, he was zigzagging all over the place, up the mountain, down the mountain, around the mountain. Yeah. It was the spotty. You know, you just find specks yeah. of blood. I mean, there was a couple little good spots where you're like, oh, that looks like good blood. All right, perfect. But then it just – hit her Dry off, up, yeah. you know, and then you wouldn't find any blood and then you just find spots. And anytime you just find little drops, I mean, you don't know that. I mean, maybe, maybe I did hit him really good and he was just, the blood was just filling up his, his lungs and his cavity, you know, it's happened. Yeah. I mean, it's, um, and it happens to all of us and I, gosh, I really thought it was top of lungs. So it was right. It was perfect left and right. And it was just high, like three quarters up the body there. Yeah. I swear it's top of lungs. Like, um, but there, you know, there is a spot up there too. You know, the guys call it the hollow spot. Like, yeah. I don't know. Like, just weird stuff happens. You put an arrow. We didn't get an exit. All we got was an entrance. But you did run a, a large expandable through him. Yeah. Man, I thought you got top of lungs and he'd fill w- with blood and die. And we looked and, I mean, we followed the blood trail and just so spotty and zigzagging. And, I mean, we'd go stretches of 50 yards, 100 yards where we wouldn't find any blood in the snow. Oh, like we, he, we looked for three hours, you know, and then I went back and looked all in the woods below and above it. I mean, I looked everywhere. Zigzag, yeah, yeah, we, we looked hard. Yeah, we looked and, pretty hard. Uh, I mean, yeah, it's it's bow hunting. Sadly, it's, it is it is bow hunting. It's yeah. the reality it, of it. It, it no does matter. happen to yep. Uh, yep, all sure. of us. I mean, that was the next morning when we were looking for it. We, went back, we backed out that evening. Yep, gave him all night, yeah. didn't push him all him. night. I, I knew exactly where the shot was. I yep. watched it hit and, yep. you know, I – so it's three quarter up the body. Let's back out and give him tonight and let him die. And you know, and 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 we'll still go back and make another pass through there and just see if we can't locate him somewhere. But yeah, we looked forever trying to track down the blood trail and then zigzag back and forth through the timber. And then you went back in there for a few hours to zigzag through the timber in and through there. But yeah, he just, just couldn't he find him. Made it too far. And like any time you lose that blood, it sucks. Yeah, I mean it happens. It's, yeah, it's not the first time it's happened. It probably won't be the last. Yep. That's you know, it, yeah, it hurts yeah. just the same. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it, def- sucks. it definitely does. I, I feel does. for you, but it, yeah, we we put in our effort to look for him. That's for yeah, sure. Yeah, at least it, yeah, it wasn't lack of effort for sure. I mean, it's just it just sucks that there's an animal out there that's got my arrow in it. You know, I that always kind of hurts me a little bit. Yeah. Well, I've shot a couple bulls with broadhead marks. They're just the toughest animal on planet Earth. Yep. You know, and I centered the rib on one that I found next day rutting that I followed his blood trail yeah. like a mile around. So, you know, they just – they live from shots and they you, – you can't recover an animal that doesn't die. Exactly. I like, I, to, mean, I like to believe he's still alive. He's going he's gonna to live and, you know. Yep, for sure. But so 
we we went up in the morning and then we started hunting and and so we were hunting for robin you know and time we go at like four in the morning we got up yeah well we we knew there was another hunter that knew there was bulls in there so we yep. we said all right we're gonna wake up earlier than anybody and we're gonna get up here earlier than anybody uh, grizzly or no grizzly, we're going to be the first ones in the mountains. Yep, and four in the morning. Four in the morning. We, we were up hiking that hillside. Yeah, we're day hunting this spot because it's the spot, you know, where we can get down and make it back down to the house and come out. It's like you could camp up in there too, but there's just not many good spots where you're not camping in the elk. And you don't so, want to blow them out at nighttime. Yep, so we'd have to leave early and then we'd come home late hunting mornings and evenings. But, yeah, we went up there in the morning and – we pushed hard in the dark and just got to the right spot as it was getting light, and they were going off. Oh, it was just intense. You could hear the cows. You could hear the – I mean, there were – I don't even know how many bulls were bugling around us, and it's just getting light. Yep, yeah, we're it, spotting elk on the far hillside. Yeah, you got that dark forest. You know, when the bugles are coming out of that dark forest, it just amplifies everything. You know, it's sound – it's – it's pretty amazing. Yeah, the way those basins lay out yeah. too. Yeah, it just echoes throughout those canyons and in through there. And so, and and one of the biggest bugles is right by us, right in front of us, up the edge of that timber, right where we had got on that bull the first day. Yeah, I mean we we were probably two hundred yards below where we got on that bull the first day. Yep. And uh, we I think we spotted one of the cows in heat, just cruising fast with something behind him, yep. behind her, and. We, we saw him in the dark forest in there. It was, it was, we could, I couldn't see my pins yet. It was still dark. Yeah. It's just that dusk when it's getting yeah. light. Yep. Yeah. And so then we started creeping in and started stalking in and playing the game. And they're in the forest chasing around and we're trying to all look and see him so we can move a little bit closer and just get to the edge of the trees, just get to where we can reach in and just get a shot on that bull. And all of a sudden he chases that cow out and around and, towards the open meadow towards us and then turns and comes down by us and that cow runs by us and we all absolutely freeze and, and then that <laughs> cow runs by us and here comes the bull and you drew at the perfect time you drew when his head was behind the tree ready to shoot him and then he steps out and he's blocking his vitals and we can see his head and we can see his rump that's it that's all we could see and uh, you, you're whispering in my ear he's 40 yards and i'm full draw at that point and I swear it was five minutes. <laughs> I mean, I, I, at, at one point I kind of flinched and almost let down and I pulled it back and you said, just keep it back, keep it back. You're going to kill that bull. And, and I think you said that twice. Yes. And, and uh, <laughs> I just know like, and you know too, but when you let down that draw, that movement and that bull was staring like holes through us, like staring at our direction, trying to figure out what we are. And we're frozen. You're at full draw. And I'm whispering, whispering in your ear, don't let down, don't, you know, you're going to kill that bull. I, don't let down. I, I swear being drawn back that long is the reason I killed that bull. Cause Absolutely. I had no buck fever at that point. I didn't even yeah. look at his antlers. At no point in time. I knew it was a bull because I did see him. But I, I think I asked you at one point, is that a legal bull? <laughs> <laughs> when he was at 80 yards and, and you looked at me and you were like, uh, that's a shooter. <laughs> yeah. Giant six point. And he asked me if it's a legal bull running through I, the I, I didn't want to look at his antlers at all. Yeah. I wanted no buck fever, or no yeah. bull fever oh, going the right on. Thing. And so – yeah, finally, after what seemed like an eternity, well, he, he looks in our direction, and then he kind of turns, like, just to the side of us, or maybe he was looking just to the side of us and looks at us, and then just rips the biggest bugle just right in our face uh, at 40 yards. Just, just steaming spit, saliva, just... It was like one of those videos. I, I mean, we were all crammed. I was looking at him through the binos, so I had this front row view. He looks at us and just lets out this freaking scream and just snot yeah, steam coming yards. out. <laughs> it was pretty amazing to see. Wasn't to that? The truth. Oh, oh that's my God. those epic encounters you just dream yeah. of. I just love those. And so then he stepped out and you put a shot on him and he ran out. And then he stopped again and you put another arrow through him. I, like I said, I, if I get a second shot, I'm going to put another arrow. And it, the second shot, I didn't have much of anything. And it didn't end up doing anything. No, I almost, hit, almost spined him, actually. Yep. But, you know, if, if you can get another arrow in an animal, it's do it. Good. Especially yeah. when you know you hit him the first time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and it, I actually think the second arrow... I think the first arrow hit him in the lungs and filled his cavity, but I think the second arrow is the blood trail we had. Okay. I think it opened it up. Okay. Yeah, it sure could have. You know, those 
you know, different arteries and different veins. And yeah, just more blood is, is better for sure. So yeah. yeah, on your entrance, you didn't get an exit. You only got an entrance and it was high in the cavity, but it got lungs and filled them up. But those are those blood trails like your bull that can be tough to follow. And yeah. so, you know, you just never know until you recover them. And so, yeah, uh, well, we actually gave them a couple hours and, and, and went over and then you met up. There was two guys that were behind us that morning and, you know, it isn't a real popular spot. It takes a ton of effort to get in there, yeah. but just the parties in there. It's the weekend. It's right after the storm. Guys want to get in the hills. It's public land. And so two guys come up, and then yeah. they tracked you down and said, hey, we found a bull over here, you know. And yeah, you I go, thought, what I was are you like, talking no, about? shit. <laughs> right? And so, <laughs> so you followed him over, went and found a bull, and uh, found it was Robin's yeah. bull. And so then you came and got us, and so we didn't even blood trail him. You followed the blood trail back. To we f- know where we found first blood, and it was pretty good there, you know. And so we would have tracked him down. But those yeah. two guys were really nice guys. Wisconsin, been Super hunting cool. out here four years, you yeah. know, and – and uh, so they were hunting and, and, you know, came and told you that they found this ball. Oh, they were in they just came out. And we and thought you, it was your ball at first. Dude, they were oh. in disbelief, man. They are like, what? You shot one last night? I'm like, yeah, we're looking for it right now. We shot another one this morning. They were just like awestruck. <laughs> <laughs> like, what? You guys are badasses. I'm like, yeah. Well, hey, which one did you find? <laughs> oh. Yeah, I mean, um, when you get in the party like that, that's when you kill elk, you know. And oh, so, dude. yeah, you guys both had encounters and chances at them. And it was pretty amazing. So we were able to go up and recover your bull and what, just a beautiful six-point. He's so heavy, such big bases, such big fronts. I mean, what a bull. I, I mean, once-in-a-lifetime bull for me and, and to be a first bull, man. Yeah, me I mean, too. I, I, that's a yeah, giant. He's a just, great one. Just awesome. I, I can't thank you and your wife enough or – housing me and and i mean i i love your family we we hung out in hawaii we hung out here but just such a good time yeah and no we've had a great time it's just so fun to share hunts with friends and yeah. go out and go hard and you've worked so hard for it we did so many miles just trying to find them and kept saying we just got to find the party we got to find where they're at and we finally found it went and got into him and then you killed the biggest bull in the group you know just this great big one and turns out it was your bull huh janus that yeah, was the bull we were sitting the, on the one we were in evening. awe of yeah. i was in awe of it the night before and oh yeah. man and that bull returned back and went right back into that rut zone and that same rut zone is where we heard him again tonight it's crazy so we blew him out he ran i don't know two miles mm-hmm. downhill to a whole nother different ravine and back around to the rut zone. Yep. Back in there the next morning. Oh, they're just in yeah. there right it, now. It's like you said, when you find the spot where they're they're at and they want to be, you know, it's it'll take a lot to get them out of there and blow them out of there. You know, I mean, I think I think the mistake a lot of people made is going up during the day when they're bedding, and then they blow them out of there, and then they, you know, sometimes they're gone. If you blow them out in the evening, or if you if you spook them in the evening, or in the early morning when they're feeding and rutting really hard. I think a lot of times they'll come back. Yeah, they go up into the thick trees yeah. and forget about you in bed down. Yeah. yeah, they have the safety of yeah. getting away to bed, which they spend most of their time doing. But, yeah, I love hunting elk on the feeding feature. Yep. You know, muleys I always bed down and hunt, or a lot of times I do high country mule deer. But, but elk, I just seem to kill them in their feeding features, you know. And I, I love that downhill thermal late in the evening, early in the morning. I love that wind you can get. And so, yeah, we snuck up and stuck that bowl. Just beautiful, heavy horn six-point. Man, it was so cool. It was just such an intense encounter. Oh, to, oh. Ha- to have you two guys with me through that whole experience. And, I mean, it couldn't have lasted more than a couple minutes, but it felt like an eternity just looking at what was going on. And that cow just – I mean – that cow came in at 60. That bull came in at 60. They're back out at 80, just running through that forest back and forth. Is he going to come in? And then all of a sudden he's at 40 yards and, and just stopped. And he looked right at us. Mm-hmm. And we're in the middle of a meadow, mm-hmm. no coverage, in the snow, wearing camo. I mean, we have to just glow out there. <laughs> and he bugles at us and just steps out. And, it, it, you know, we had good wind. The cow ran right by us. Cow ran right by us, and we didn't lo- let him know we were there. Yep. I mean, your your theory on, hey, don't don't let him know you're there if you don't have to, it paid off. They and, look at you like you're a tree, not yeah. like you're a human trying yeah. to hunt them because they hadn't smelled, heard, seen humans. They're just in there rutting. And so, yeah, he looked at us, and there's three of us, and we're in a meadow. We're, 
on the edge of cover, but we just freeze and camo does the work. And it was know, dark. I mean, I, I could see my pins at that point, but it was yeah. 10 minutes into shooting. Light. Yeah. 10 minutes into shooting light. Yep. And it, Twilight. It, it, um, which helps too, which definitely helped. In I mean, dark if we were glowing and, out there in the sun, I, I think he would have ran. Well, but. we, we knew, I mean, we knew what we were doing too. We were all crammed together, looking like sure, one person. Sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, hiding behind each other. It was wasn't pretty, the first spot it was, stock, but it was pretty we, funny. We could have gotten into the coverage a little bit more, but we couldn't. The way they were running, we were trying to get over there. We we couldn't get in, and and the snow was, you know, it it had melted the night bef- the day before and froze overnight. It was crunchy yeah. as all get out. You can spot and stock with one guy, two guys, as I did. <laughs> three guys even worked. Three, <laughs> three guys. But yeah, you're right. Everything was working for us and i always say you know animals see movement and if you don't move like you're good if you would have let down your draw busted never would have came together but that cow ran by us he was interested in that cow and we just stayed frozen out there we're just a bush we're just a green tan black bush sitting out there and like you say i'm hiding behind you and you're hiding behind me and yeah you know that it it just worked out it was meant to be both stepped out and you drilled them at 40 and able to get them so epic so So cool Yeah, I mean, it's one of those scenarios, you know, where everything did work out. You know, yeah. it's like tonight, you know, it, it doesn't, it definitely doesn't always work out. You know, nine times out of ten, yeah, you, you guys were were minutes from yeah. shooting that bowl tonight, and instead he came in and bumped those cows out of there right to where you needed to be. Yeah, and, I mean, I mean, let's see. I, I went up three times. I shot a bull the first evening. The next two times I went up, you know. Tonight, the tonight I got a shot, and Robin then shot the one. Robin the shot time. the one. The other one I was I was on. I mean, it's just been insane. It's been insane. Yeah, There's yeah. So got into every him. every hunt we've seen a six by six. Mm-hmm. I, I guess tonight great. was a big five by five, but mm-hmm. still a, a still bowl. still a shooter bowl yeah. with a bow. I mean, trophy Monday, all, all day raining, long. Oh, nobody yeah. on them. Nobody oh, yeah. up there hunting anymore. And yep. that hill's just a grind to get up. And oh, we man. we keep pushing up it day in day out. I don't think guys can do it day in, day out. At least a couple guys that know about those elk, or they just don't know they're all there. They come out so late and early in the morning, and you got to be up there to hear them bugle. You can't hear it yeah. from down below. So, I mean, I really think we're like the only crew that knows about them, that they're in there it's doing unreal. their deal. It's unreal. I yeah. mean, to, to be to be that accessible and to have that many bulls mm-hmm. and no guys. Well, yep. I mean, that's what it takes, too. I mean, who's going to wake up at 4 in the morning and walk walk? up like vertical 2,000 feet <laughs> in the dark, in grizzly country. In grizzly country. You know, it's like, <laughs> I mean, it's kind of like swimming in murky water in Hawaii, you know. There's sharks big, out there. Big, big rainstorm <laughs> yeah. and, and somebody dumped a dead pig carcass in the water. Yeah, it <laughs> it might be a tiger shark you know, or two out there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you got to go for it. Like, that's part of it. And, you know, it, it's you versus the elk. And most of the time when you get in the elk, it's your plays and, and your movements. But – I mean, to ignore the human pressure would, you know, that's that's not realistic. There is human pressure, and so yep. you know, a lot of times you are hunting to be there earlier than the next guy, and, yeah. and to be up on the top earlier. Well, the only reason we killed that bull is because we left so early. We yep. by the time we climbed up that thing, I mean, it takes us. I don't even know how long it takes us to climb all that vert and get up on top and do those miles, but. It takes us a lot longer than it looks. You can glass a spot, but getting up there is a whole different story. Like it's a different mountain. It's a when solid you get on out. It. It's a solid hour of a push yep. to get up there. Yep. And and that bull that I shot, if we were two minutes later, he was farther up the mountain. Yep. We wouldn't have caught him. Well, like the first day we it, went we, up there, we would have chased him at eighty yards yep. for an hour and a half. Yep, that was great judgment. You know, good anticipation. You knew you knew what he was going to do. You know, that's why we got up at four in the morning because, like you said, if we weren't in that spot, you know, if we were down below and we spotted them, we're like, all right, let's go after them. It's going to be an hour before we get up there. They're going to be, you know, halfway up the mountain it's already too late. gone. Yeah. yeah, you're already yep. too late. you got to be in the feature when yep. it's happening. And yep. that's in that twilight to first hour when you can really make things happen. And that was the whole reason we got on your bowl. You yep. know, we had busted that six, you know, made the extra effort to go around the mountain, heard bugles, then made the extra you know, climb up through there to climb some more vertical and get up there right at the the last minutes of shooting light, and that that bull came by us. That was the whole reason, just that yep. extra little push and just see if they're there, see where they're at. And by then we had those great thermals coming down the hill, and oh, that was and perfect. Make something happen. That was that was just amazing to see them walk by at twenty yards, the cows, and then that big bull comes walking up, just like 
Holy crap. How long have I been here? This is the first evening? <laughs> I, I wish I could hunt these things like I hunt axis deer. I mean, just they're so cool to hunt. Mm-hmm. And just, uh, you know, I'm, I'm tagged out for the year in Montana. Mm-hmm. I wish I could hunt them all the time. I mean, it's so fun. They and, are so and, fun. And, yeah, you got grizzlies and you got cougars and you got wolves and skunks. <laughs> I'm hiking down the mountain and I hear some rustling in the bushes. And it's, it's twilight. It's almost dark. And I look to the side, and there's something kind of scurrying towards me. And all of a sudden, this black tail flips up with a white underside on it, r- 10 feet from me. And I'm like, oh, crap, it's a skunk. <laughs> and I scream like a 10-year-old girl and ran down the mountain. And thank God it didn't spray me. I probably wouldn't have shot that bull the next morning. But... <laughs> there's no way. would have been <laughs> sleeping outside. <laughs> Wait, that's not a new scent killer? <laughs> no. Uh-uh. Yeah, um, I, I, yeah. There's a skunks don't have very good eyesight, and so when you run into them, like they will just run right into you like that. Like you got to make yourself. He see ran at me. I, I I swear they're he, aggressive. You didn't know that? No, he he came at me. <laughs> yeah, uh, no, I run into those things every now and again. But yeah, we haven't haven't seen any grizz bears. Haven't seen any sign of them yet. But. Might have to go up by the carcass tomorrow. I give it a yeah. Give it worry, a wide yeah look that worries me a little. One, one more chance up there. Yeah, one more yeah. chance. Yeah, fun to get into them, and I, I just I love that spot and stock game of just not letting them know you're there and trying to cut them off and play the game. And you don't get reckless with your stocks, but you got to be aggressive on elk too because they'll walk away from you. Yeah. You know, so you're just always, you know, you're trying to make a move with a good wind. But, you know, then you get frozen for an hour and a half in one position because they're looking your way. And, you know, if you move, you're busted. Yeah, no, I like the way you do it, because like you're saying, if 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 they think that you're another elk, you know, if your competitor coming in for their cows, they're looking. <clears throat> so they're aware. They're a lot more. You're making them more aware. You know, they won't always come rushing up towards you. You know, you kind of got to be in their zone for them to come at you. Yeah, when you're calling which is, at which, them. Which like, is usually too close. Yeah, so when you're calling at them and sounding like another bull, you're right. Like, um, you know, and I don't know what the odds are. It depends the bull's mood, how hot he is, yeah. whether he comes in or not. They don't all come in, but some of them do come in, and calling is effective, and I think yeah. a lot of bulls are killed that way. Um, but, but yeah, it's it's got to be the right sound. When he comes in, it's usually pins and needles looking for that other elk making the sound or looking for an intruder. And, and the opposite can happen, too. He can gather his cows and go the other way and try to get them out of there. We've had that happen to us in, in Oregon, you know. Brian, Brian your, your story on why you stopped calling him in. Yes. You, you, you had a big, what, 7x7, seven seven, yeah. I think you said. This giant bull that was in the drainage that we were hunting – and, and one of my favorite drainages and been hiking for days and hunting a bunch of days on end. And I finally see this giant bull that I just dream of, this seven by seven, and he's got all these cows and he's in this drainage. And I've called a lot of bulls into my day, a lot for my dad, a lot for myself. Um, so I see this bull and I, it's just the one you want, the one chance you want all season long at just this giant. And so I crawl down in there and I, I get above, I think, where I think he wants to be, where I think he's moving towards. And I, I try to do everything right and make a couple cow calls. And I watch that seven point gather up his cows and go running miles away from me, just clear the drainage from a few cow calls trying to call him in. And I'm just like, what? What am I doing with these things? Like I'm chasing elk out and high pressure elk react different to calls. In fact, you know, when I hunt central Montana, yeah, I mean, you, you don't call them in over there. Nobody really calls them in. Nobody really calls to them. They're high pressure. They hear it. And, and bulls nowadays, they just know what it is. And I, I was calling in a lot of satellite bulls. I was not calling in a lot of giant herd bulls. The dominant You know, bull, the, yeah. the giant bulls are just older and don't respond right. And so, yeah, that was what kind of changed my mind. But what really changed my mind was having success being able to spot and stalk and being able to do it without calls. And you get to move with the herd, and it's like you got – you get – more time like inside that zone and yeah. you you don't interact back and forth but it's that same thrilling excitement of the rut where they're bugling and they're going off and they're chasing oh. cows and you get to just be with them and just observe all that you know and, and maybe you're not a part of it but you are a part of it because you're right there and you're looking for your chance to close in and seal that deal you know so yeah man i really like hunting them that way i think it's i think it's a good way to hunt them in today's day and age and it, it's what we're used to i mean that's how we hunt deer and and everything else in hawaii and spot and stock you, you 
you're it's game on i mean when you when you spot them it's game on you figure out the wind you figure out where you need to be and where are they going to be that's where you want to be yep. yeah and, and you guys are good at it you get so many chances get to hunt you know access deer year round and chase them and they've got amazing senses and so your guys' spot and stock game is on it's tight that's what it needs to be like that you know over those ridge line approaches where we got yeah. busted today yeah. you know but you know it when, happens yeah you guys are good at it because you get a lot of experience stalking and that's what it takes is learning those little secrets and you know that's the difference between getting them and not getting them and, and why we didn't get a bull today you know it you know the cow came up and there, sure there's you could, nothing you guys could have done i yeah. mean i watched the whole thing unfold i right. knew i knew you were blown before you even got halfway up that mountain yeah sometimes <laughs> they just got you but you know you just try to get better from it and try to make those right decisions and let those instincts kick in and but you guys are willing to do whatever it takes i mean yeah. you, i think at one point you were crawling through an irrigation ditch to try to get a shot at a oh. whitetail through the water and <laughs> it's 35 degrees with the wind blowing out of the north like uh you guys know how to stock and know what you can do and what you can't do and you know that's a big reason why you're successful for sure yeah that yeah. and all the effort doing what you're comfortable how you're comfortable hunting is important you know what i mean and if something's not working for you try change it and and see if that works you know and keep changing your tactics but if, if you're doing something that's if you're comfortable with it and you're good at it and it's working for you you know great keep at it you know everyone's different you got to look at every scenario and like analyze it where the elk are what they're doing and like i think that's where your instincts kick in where it's just like you just look at everything and go okay can i get on them where's my stock am i coming from above what's the wind doing what's the yeah. but you just analyze everything and then you try to come out come up with the right play and we bounce ideas off each other a bunch and, which know, is so cool yeah I mean, and it, you just look at me and go i agree or you come up with an idea and go yep you're absolutely right, and you come up with theories and reasons why the wind's going to do what it's going to do, and why the where you think the animals are going to go, and how you're going to play it. But you know, it's cool to be able to bounce ideas off and come up with the best game plan, and then have it work out. It it, it really is, and and I mean, you know these animals so well. I mean, you you really do, and I, yeah, you took me on a mission through montana wilderness mountains <laughs> elevation everything else but at the same time we were in elk the whole time mm -hmm. and, and yeah we didn't find the party for a few days but we were still in small herds and and stocking bulls and wind was blowing us out but you know you, you, the fact you know where they're going to be and and where we need to go and yeah you got to put in the miles to find them once we're there and being able to bounce ideas off of each other it, it was epic mm -hmm all-time hunt for me for yeah, sure that's awesome i mean from that thunderstorm lightning storm to the hail to grizzly marks in camp and it's uh, a full experience yeah, it right was a full experience yeah oh it's it's what we live for is that it, that adventure bow hunting is so cool you know and yeah the montana mountains in in the middle of september you don't know what storms are rolling in grizzly bears and and, oh, and big bull elk running around vast wilderness. Yeah, Pretty I mean, fun. it was amazing. I hey, mean, the, the aloha you showed us, you and your family showed us, was just awesome, Brian. I, that's yeah, much appreciated. I, we, we can't say enough. And, yeah. and the, the experience here. And, man, you guys, I mean, you got antelope. You got bears. You got uh, the hunting here. Yeah, Hawaii, we get to hunt year-round, and, and we don't have tags or limits, and, and we hunt a lot of animals. But so do you. And granted, you go to other states and things like that, but you got a lot of cool animals here. I, I never thought – whitetail wasn't even on my list. <laughs> never, because tree stand hunting, I've done it. It's just not my thing. I like spot and stock. And spot and stock whitetail, I'll do again. That was that was a lot of <laughs> Wasn't fun. Wasn't that fun? That was a lot of fun. Oh, and we saw some good ones too. We, oh. we did see one step out, or I saw one step out with just this flyer with a, a double point on it, just a really good whitetail. I love to hunt muleys late. I get one buck tag, but that thing would have caught an arrow if I could have got close yeah. enough. Yeah, it was a monster. Yeah, huh? you know, I had him. 80 yards at one point, just too many does in between me and him and just couldn't close the deal. Ended up getting busted, but yeah, really nice buck. Um, we saw those three, uh, while we were scout scouting elk, three whitetails that were just huge. Oh, the one with the drop time. Oh, yeah, I man. got a picture of that. I'll have oh, to post man. it Oh, man. Yeah, that was a great whitetail. That was a huge whitetail. Yeah. Oh, we got a lot of pictures. I love taking good pictures of the hunt. And and you're into it too, Robin, and so we just took a bunch of good shots. I, I mean, how I many have, photos I think we have thousands have? of photos. Right? <laughs> Yeah. yeah, yeah, you get it. it took like three hundred. Take a bunch of three hundred just on my just elk. Just on your elk. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the only time I don't take them is when we're on the elk, you know. Or I, I try, you know, if I got time, I'll, I'll 
click a quick one, but oh, I was ki- I was kicking bowls, myself, man. I was standing behind you. I should have just I had my phone in my pocket. You know what? I, I wouldn't have killed out. that bowl. I, I I'm we we filmed so much, and filming was my nemesis at one point. It was. I mean, I I just hated filming, and yeah, we we have tons and tons of good f- footage. I wish we had that on film, but I'm glad we don't because we have a bowl down. Right. And, exactly. And I, I, we, we've talked about this, and we should probably talk about it, but um, top of the mountain karma. Oh, right. The, 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 whole, yeah. the whole reason we got this bowl down is uh, picking up trash at the top of the mountain. Yeah, I told you. Gosh, I've had this work out for me so many times, and I think <laughs> I talked about it with Dan on the podcast in Idaho. I'm not sure. But, yeah, anytime I – pick up trash i always tell dan it's good karma when i was hunting with dan and then i'd kill a big buck and i said well it was that karma cloud i had from picking up that trash so now dan believes in it wholeheartedly (laughs) he'll race me to trash on the mountain and when i killed my idaho buck this year i picked up two beer cans on the top of the mountain and so we we were hiking out in the middle of the wilderness and somebody had stashed water bottles in there and probably 10 water bottles yeah i mean You'd like to think it was with good intent. He just didn't make it back up there. But I just hate finding trash in this pristine wilderness. And Montana's clean. Like, we don't have a lot of garbage, which is nice. I've been to mountain ranges that are dirty. But, yeah, we did find a tuna wrapper at one point we picked up. Um, Right right next to the bear marks. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Could have been the the cause and effect. (laughs) Yep. Yep. And then, um, but we were coming out, and uh, we spotted this water bottle, you know, and Kind of look at it and go, okay, and then there's 10 of them in the brush. And, you know? and our packs are heavy at this point. I mean, it, yeah, they're, they're 30-something pounds, 40 pounds, but well, we, we're miles. Miles, and miles in elevation. And, we're coming out to deep. a different spot, getting yeah. shuttled back to our truck. Yep. Um, but we see them, and I just tell Rob, and I said, it's good karma, man. we got to carry them out. I'll make, you know, we'll make room for them. Let's empty them out. Let's put them in our pack. And so we emptied out 10 water bottles, and we got done. I told you, you're going to kill a big bull now. <laughs> sure enough. <laughs> sure, sure enough. enough. Yeah, Come a few out. days later, you're dealing behind a great big six-point oh, bull. Oh, man. Yep. You, you, you called it. Clean up the wilderness. Yeah. Oh, so awesome to have it work out. So that's my tip of the day is if uh, you want to kill a big critter. <laughs> Pick up that trash. Pick up that trash. It's good karma. Yeah, don't leave in don't leave in the pristine wilderness, man. That's it. But yeah, so much fun hunting with you guys. You guys got a bunch of hunting skill and just really fun to do a western adventure with you and definitely won't be the last. I, I sure enjoy hanging out with you. And we got one more to join us. Sean's gotta join us. He's feeling better and recovered. Yep. I think I, I mentioned it, but yeah, he got really sick. Um uh, the last hunt you guys did before you left. Oh, it, it, and who knows if it was the five, hunt. five days before I'm flying out, six days before I'm flying out, and we went hunting, and yeah, he he came down pretty ill, hospitalized, and yeah, he I mean, was supposed to come with us. And that's, it, that's the only thing missing from the whole experience. I mean, having you two guys there with the bull, but having Sean there, yeah. is, and you called him that morning after oh, I, the I, deal, I, and he doesn't know this, but I'm like tearing up and almost breaking down on the phone to him. He wanted you to kill one so bad. Oh. I mean, these guys are such good friends and such good hunting partners. Like we, we can all learn something from you know the way you guys are. Is you just you give the shirt off your back. Anything you have is is for the other guy. You know whatever you need, you share everything. But and then you guys pull for each other and really want each other to be successful and help each other. And and Sean had killed a big bull in Oregon, and he was the one of you three that had a bull and had a giant one. And I, I mean, I think he put this whole thing together so Pretty you guys much. could kill out. He, I mean, he was yeah. my, he was my connection where I got to meet you guys. And yeah. I, oh, yeah. you know, I, I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm really fortunate. It's so fun to hunt with good friends that, that do anything for each other. And we've done a couple adventures now together and it was just a really cool deal. So the next one, we got to have Sean along and, and yeah. he's feeling better. He's recovered. He got sick and, and hospitalized and, and liver wasn't working right. Yeah, it was, and, he it was, just, it was and he's so healthy and so young and he goes so hard and he just, absolutely loves to bow hunt you know it, it's probably a good piece of advice for anybody listening yeah, is for all of us i, I mean it, it could have been dehydration that caused what he had um it it very well could have been something like leptospirosis but butchering an animal without gloves on is what the doctors think it might be and I, you know, I I've done it in the past. I'm pretty good about putting gloves on now. I never wear gloves. <laughs> yeah, I, I I got I got really sick early on in my hunting, and so I, I doing I, a pig. You thought you got pig, really sick? From I, a pig. I think I got leptospirosis back in the day, fevers and and just huh. gnarly throwing up. And you'd never know though. It could be like the flu, right? It, it could be, but 
I can take the measures to not have it happen again. Yeah, for sure. and, and that's what I do. Yep. And, 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 you know, having this happen to somebody that, I mean, Sean can, that guy can put on miles and go as deep as anybody. Yeah. And just to see him that broken down could have been like a mosquito. Could, I mean, could have been. Could have been anything. Could have been anything. And yeah. he re- he shared his water that day. Like I say, you guys will all do anything for each other. Yep. And your other buddy didn't have enough, and he shared half his water. But he's been dehydrated. Oh, before. we. I mean, like, we we've been that that hunt was minor compared to what we've done in the past and dehydrated. Yeah, our and for body. the Rams, you guys do oh, that. Uh, just seems super cool in yeah. that steep country. But oh, yeah. you guys, it's you guys keep telling me it's the hottest hunt on planet Earth and that you got to, you know, stash water and carry as much as you can carry. And like, uh, so he's done those hunts and he's super healthy and goes super yeah, hard. He's and it's one of the most aggressive hunters out there. Who knows, man? I mean, it, I mean, you never know. I, yeah. I don't think it's anything he did wrong. Like it's <laughs> no. just, uh, he can hit anybody, but he's recovered now and doing better. And we've been keeping in touch with him. And a lot of the reason why we're successful, you know, is oh, he's the, feeling better. The, the fact, I mean, Janus was supposed to come out with me and Sean was supposed to be there. Janus stayed back a couple of days and, you know, the first couple of days I'm here, I'm I'm guilty. My friend's in the hospital, and I'm out with you in the backcountry. And if we had gotten on a bull, I don't know if I could have shot it. I mean, <laughs> just the mental game alone when you're hunting yeah. and thinking about your buddy in the hospital. And in a different place. Just a sure. total different place. Yeah. And the fact that he was able to turn around and get out of the hospital and Janus is on his way out here. Yep. He was just pulling for you guys. He wanted you guys to kill a bull so bad. And then Robin shot just a just a beauty. Just and Sean was so stoked. And I mean that just that just made everything awesome. Yeah. I mean, enjoy life, you know, take as much precautions as you can. But you can But you know, I mean, have fun with it and don't be scared to go on adventures because tell you what, I'd 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 way rather get eaten by a shark, you know, or something like that. Or then, a bear. Or a bear. Get, <laughs> hey, that could be tomorrow. Then, then dying in a car crash or getting sick in the yeah, hospital. Yeah. I mean, uh, huh, that's just. Got to live you, life to the fullest. You, and you never dangers, know. And there's dangers in everything we do. And the, the fact is, is driving your car down the highway is exactly. probably the most that dangerous is, thing you yeah, do. By far the most dangerous you know, but thing yeah, you do. You, you, I like that your safety is in your own hands and your own decision making. I like that. I like to make those those decisions and those yep. life and death decisions in the backcountry. You don't get to make those in everyday life. You're safe in your house and your car and you go to work and yep. you, but getting away and detaching from that really makes you realize what's important, you know, your family and your friends and but it's good for you, you know, yeah, it's good for you. Yep. Good time to reflect and yep. and adventure and passion in life. I mean, that's what keeps me in oh, shape, man. keeps me healthy, you know. It makes you want to be, you know, better to everybody around you. You know, it's a, it's a great thing we have in hunting. Yeah, it really is. Yeah, I agree. You know, just, well, just do everything you can and stay safe out oh, there. Stay and, safe. Water, right? I mean, I mean wa- wa- we don't know that that's the deal, but especially where you guys come from, you'll always need yeah. water. It's the lifeblood. Well, and and you mentioned that I wanted to be by a water source while we were hunting, and part of it is I'm at major altitude compared to what I'm used to, and. I, I've had altitude sickness before. I lived in Colorado for nine years. I I know that water can just keep you from that. And I, I think I drank five times the amount of water you did on the mountain. And it was just flushing my system. And I, I had to do it. Mm-hmm. Uh, my my body wouldn't have held up without it. Yeah. And, like, I, and I'm used to drinking a lot of water when I'm hunting anyway in Hawaii. Mm-hmm. You have no, to. You pushed hard in that. Uh, the training you did before you got here yeah. really helped. Um, and then, yeah, you just got to acclimate to the, to the altitude, which is wild over here. It took a while to get used to your legs did really good. Brett right. took a little bit, while, but man, you kept up everywhere we went. You were game for everywhere we had to go and everything we had to do. I mean, uh, you, I'm, you I'm still in. sucking oxygen. I mean, that, that's not going to change. You can't. Yep. Yeah, it got better though. It got better, we made but bigger pushes up, up the hills sure. before we'd have to stop and break. But yeah, no, you guys all did good. Yeah. You guys come in shape. Well, thanks, game Brian. and ready to rock and roll. It yeah. means a lot coming from you, man, because you're you're, you're one speed up that mountain. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. slow, slow. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I think I asked us. you. I, I mean, we're we're all we can all hike, and and I think I asked you at one point, do any of your hunting buddies keep up with you? Because <laughs> man, you are just one speed up that mountain. <laughs> hands yeah. in hands in pockets. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> you you don't you feel bad when he's like he's taking a break, but he doesn't really want to take a break. <laughs> you know, he's time oh, every every time he look back, I'm like, oh, okay, here we go. I gotta go again. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, uh, no, you guys did great. We pushed up all those mountains. We're covering it. Oh, what fun. Yeah. Elk everywhere. I mean, it was just incredible. Yeah, we hit Mon- it right. Found the party. That's the key. Yeah. Yep. Mont- yeah. You, you said that day one. We'll find the party, and we did. Yep. You guys are going to get back in him tomorrow morning. Mm-hmm. Montana. We oh get one gosh. last chance. One, yeah. la- one last bull pack out. I'm ready for that. We didn't even get into it packing out one bowl with three guys oh yeah so it's heavy isn't it oh man did a good job butchering you guys do so much butchering in hawaii um but yeah we we had to uh they'll leave the balls attached you're not used to that in the no, states that, that's, that's an extra five <laughs> yeah. pounds on an elk it's tricky when you're boning them out too to leave the balls attached so so my technique is to leave a strip of hair with the balls on it that attach to the the biggest chunk of meat and then it's legal in the state of montana but yeah we uh quartered bone that thing we caped them you caped them you're gonna get a mount done and then we uh saw cut the skull like just the horns off 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 the skull i think that's a good way to save weight just that oh, little yeah. saw and you can saw that off that saves a bunch but yep. yeah we were heavy we did one bowl three guys down boned out um but yeah you get them all out i i think we were all pushing 100 pounds i usually say it's about 80 a piece but it, it was heavy coming down it was uh, we carry we each carried your wife out holly was on my back the whole way down <laughs> right that yeah. big bull man that was awesome yeah but we it, made it yeah it was awesome well and, you know we just just kept saying everybody take their time and be safe and i always say you know i'm gonna take two two loads instead of one and here we are again we take the one heavy one down with three guys um but yeah you can get them out they just you know, kept saying just take your time nobody get hurt you know <laughs> Easy down the steep slopes, and then we took the ridge lines down. We made him out. He wasn't too bad. It wasn't bad. Yeah, we grinded. We, we had we had all day. Yeah, yeah exactly. It's, we it's, could it's break. easy how you can slow when you got a giant elk down. Yeah, oh, yeah. isn't that the truth? <laughs> yeah, I'll cruise out now. It is nice. Yeah, coming up good. was a different story. Got to beat the light. Got to beat the guy behind you. <laughs> you got to beat the light Something. tomorrow. Because yeah. I beat the light tomorrow. Those bulls are going to be in the same spot tomorrow. Yep. Yeah, and I Robin said if I told him to come up with us, he'd come up. So yeah, if if I drink any more of this whiskey, <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> I'm not gonna do that to you, Robin. I'll, 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 I'll wait for the phone call to pack it out. I will hike up that mountain tomorrow with your bowl down. Yeah, you. I know you will, right? You, you, you owe it to me. <laughs> <laughs> I got no cell service in this house. I don't know. <laughs> He's still going to be sleeping. Did you guys call me? Uh, yeah. Well, it's been fun, guys. I really enjoy hunting with you. It won't be the last adventure for sure. We'll go on many more. But, uh, can't um, wait. Good hunting this, this week, guys. You guys really worked hard. Man, was that fun getting into those elk. So one more day. Um, I'll probably let them know on the ending of this podcast. Although I'm going to release it quick because right now everybody's elk hunting, you know, and so – um, but I'll let them know if we if we killed that bull tomorrow. Oh, All right. yeah. So. Well, thank you, Brian, and congratulations, Robin. That was Dude, one amazing Couldn't have done it without you. Glad trip. you were with Brian and I right there with us. Wish Sean was with us too, but yeah, uh, epic all time. Yeah, yeah, congrats, man. Thanks, Brian. Yeah, awesome bull. All right, thanks, guys. All right. All right, guys, that's a wrap. Um, Really fun podcast for me to sit down with those two buddies, and and we just had so much epic elk hunting this week, and then to do a a late night, lighthearted podcast, and and, uh, some ribbing between friends, and and a bunch of laughs, uh, that was really fun for me, so uh, we want to do more like that, and and just a great couple guys, so uh, Janus Padilla, and then uh, Robin Kane. And uh, Janus doesn't have any social media, but you can follow Robin Keen. Uh, he's uh, at Maui Bowhunter on Instagram, and, and he's also got a Facebook page. Um, he really gets after it. Those guys hunt a lot, but uh, just great guys. I, I think I mentioned it in the podcast, but they just do anything for their friends, you know. And, and uh, I mean, you can see it in the field. You can see it, you know, when we're gearing up. I mean, they're constantly letting somebody else borrow something or giving them something they need. And, and they're always pulling for each other to be successful and, and, and just always willing to lend a hand to, to help out. Just great house guests. Uh, just can't say enough good things about those two guys. I, I really enjoy hanging out with them. And uh, as well as, as Sean Kern, he was on the last podcast and and he was uh, the one that we mentioned that's that's back in Maui and he he's doing real well and making a recovery. And so he's the third part of their team that that travels around. And so we missed him this trip, but um, 
I'm sure he'll be on a, on more adventures with us. So uh, just just a great, fun podcast. Um, so the sponsor for today's show was uh, Yeti Coolers. Uh, again, Yeti's is just a game changer for me. Um, I'm just getting ready for my elk hunt. Um, I meet my cameraman on Saturday, which is a couple days here, and, and uh, I'll have my Yeti all loaded up and you know, plan on, on keeping my bull and getting them back here. And, and especially for us bow hunters that do so much hot weather hunting where we do have to put our meat in coolers, uh, it, it just keeps it so cool. And then the drains are set up right where it drains all the moisture and all the blood. Um, so, so your meat isn't getting damp in there. And, and, uh, I always mention the bear proof container for camping in national forest. Um, so, so you don't get in trouble about your food storage. Uh, just put a couple locks on either end and, um, they're just building great products. So, uh, check out Yeti coolers, uh, again, over there at Eastman's. Um, I just saw that promo code. Uh, I, I didn't ask anybody over there. I just saw it. Uh, I think I saw it come across on social media, but I thought that was a pretty good deal. That outdoor edge knife kit looks like a really good kit, like a $40 kit. And you got to have a, a great butchering kit when you're butchering animals and, and even cutting in the field. Um, I, you know, I, I really like those, the, the new sharp knives that they have, like the outdoor edge, the replaceable razor blade, but these outdoor edge knives, um, they, it looks like a butchering or processing kit. Um, looks like a really good deal. You get that with a subscription to both magazines right now. So go check that out on the website. And with that, I better get my, my stuff packed up here and, uh, get healed up. I'm going to, uh, get a couple podcasts ready to go. So one for next week while I'm gone and then, uh, get this one all released to you guys and, uh, just keep putting out good content and good guests. And right now it's just all about hunting hard. Um, uh, had a good season so far and been able to chase a lot of critters and have a lot of fun. And, and part of that too is, is seeing friends be successful and helping them out and making sure you're being a good hunting partner. So, uh, you know, I've been hunting with Dan. I want to continue to help Dan make sure he gets his elk and and other buddies as well. You know, Clint's been out here to the house. He's been antelope hunting. Um, gosh, and then and then the Hawaiian guys came out hunting elk, and and Robin was able to kill that nice bull and a nice white tail buck. And and Janus had some opportunities and was close. Oh, that's what I was going to tell you guys. I was supposed to give you the update on our last day of hunting. We talked about it in the podcast. So me and Janus. Woke up at four and made our run up there on the mountain, and it was uh, storming like crazy, uh, raining at the bottom and then snowing at the top, and we ended up getting into about a foot of snow, and we had the most epic day of elk hunting. Uh, I think we saw like nine different bulls and 150 cows, and they were just going off, bugling back and forth, and we got on a herd bull first that had a satellite, had about 60 cows. And they kind of just got away from us up the mountain, but we could hear bugles coming up. And so we kind of dove in the edge of the timber and got on them. And we got right into this nice six point. And, and uh, so we got into this, uh, well, we were into the cows and all the cows worked below us. And they were 20, 30 yards, but we got stuck in this kind of thick part of cover where they were down below us in this thick part of the cover. And and then here comes this giant six point bull and he comes up and kind of ruts this cow bias and, and Janus drew twice on him, uh, drew once when he was coming through the 50 yard opening, but I was on his right side. I couldn't tell when he had the good shooting lane and to stop that bull for him, you know, and he was ho- hoping the bull would stop on its own so he didn't spook the cows. And uh, that bull worked by, he drew again on him, and, and I think the second time he drew, some cows picked him out drawn, and just too much movement, and, and uh, he wasn't able to get him. But we had that bull 30 to 50 yards for a couple minutes, and all his cows for about five minutes. And while we're sitting there, there's another bull that comes behind us at 70 yards through the trees, and he's chasing a cow through there, ran into a, another wide six-point bull, chasing some cows, made a play on him. I mean, We were just in the action. They were bugling but we just we couldn't make it happen the last day and and uh so Janus is going home with this tag and you know he he needed a perfect shot he he needed redemption from that from that one shot he had on that bull I know he felt really bad for what happened we gave that that bull another look on the way down just we have walked every square inch of where that bull could go and glassed every square inch glass for birds and I think that that bull just lived that he hit but um he you know it's it just um it's bow hunting it, it happens and it's part of the reality. And, you know, I like that we can tell the truth on this podcast and, and, and tell the scenarios of how they go down and, and what we did and then try to analyze it, try to figure out what went right and what went wrong. And, 
and, and just be honest with our audience because it happens. It happens to the best of us, you know, that that make a shot that isn't exactly perfect. And, you know, you take ethical shots, but there's so much excitement there and the animals can move. And, you know, there, there's so many things that can go wrong that it's just bow hunting. So, um, you know, I, I felt bad, but, but Janus was so happy for his buddy Robin killing a bull and just for the experiences and the adventure. And I, I really like Janus's attitude about the hunt. You know, he's just all about having fun and the adventure. And, and I think, you know, that's what we should all be about. And I know we are that we embrace that, but sometimes, you know, you, you get so much drive to harvest an animal that sometimes you lose perspective of, of what's really important. And that's, you know, spending time in the woods, spending time with your buddies, having encounters and, and just enjoying your time off and, and resetting. So you can, you can go back to work and, and, uh, yeah, it refuels your soul for for everything you're doing. So, anyways, really cool, really fun with those guys. Fun podcast. That was a great one to lay down. And with that, I'm gonna get my stuff packed up and see if I can't go get a bowl of my own. Um, gonna try to record it, which is a another cool thing with me, or another cool thing for me is is just that that guy and Ike Eastman, you know, just trust me to you know get the permits and pay a cameraman and have him come with me. And so, you know, I. Uh, yeah, again, just want to have fun and, and go chase some bulls around, but gosh, I really want to get one on video. So, um, yeah, going to go enjoy myself. My dad's going to come over and camp with us and hunt. Uh, my buddy Dan's been over there nonstop hunting. So I've been getting reports from him. So, uh, should be a good camp and a fun time and I'm going to bring my recording stuff. So hopefully I, hopefully I can sit down. I think Dan's been my number one guest, but we just hunt so much together, but get Dan on there. Uh, I want to get my cameraman Dalton Bueller, see if we can, um, talk my dad to get on getting on here too, as well. So, uh, we'll see what we can lay down there and see if we can go to put down a bowl. So with that, uh, good hunting, you guys keep hunting hard, just keep believing and and covering those miles. It can just come together in, in a, in, in a couple moments. So, uh, keep hunting hard, have fun, enjoy yourself. And I'll check in with you next week or I'll, uh, record the one for next week and check in with you in two. So, uh, thanks guys for, for all the support as always with the, the podcast and social media, spreading the word of the podcast just means so much to me, uh, you know, that we can, we can put this out, you know, out of my house, just with a, a lot of my different buddies and different guests I can get and, and keep growing this thing it just means the world to me. So thanks for all the support guys. And I just love seeing your pictures. You guys are tagging me in, uh, you guys being successful. You guys have just killed some great animals this year, bucks and, and bulls and, so keep up the good work and keep working hard. Uh, talk to you next week. Well, two weeks. Gosh, uh, I'm never going to end this podcast. This this ending just won't end for me, but have a good one, guys. <laughs>